back to the phone line. Sophia listening in California, Sirius XM 131. Hi, Sophia. Hi. How are you? I'm good. You have a question um, for me? Yes, I do. Good. My question for you today was, is there any evidence in the Bible that God actually brought men to heaven and brought them back? No, actually there's 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 no evidence for that whatsoever. If you if you think about Luke chapter 16, you may be familiar with that Sophia where there's a a rich man who dies and then the beggar who's lying by his gate dies as well. And 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 then Jesus says how the angels carried Lazarus to the bosom of Abraham or to paradise where he was being comforted. So you can think about this his body he is probably eaten by the wild dogs uh, because he's not even given a proper burial. But the non-physical aspect of his humanity goes to be with the Lord. That's what it means to be comforted there in Abraham's bosom. It's a way of saying he is now in the presence of the Lord. Conversely, the rich man dies and he ends up in torment. Now then the rich man he, in the story, wants to go back and warn his brothers or at least have God sends someone back, uh, including Lazarus, so that his brothers can be warned so that they do not come to the same fate. But the answer in Scripture is they have Moses and the prophets. If they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, in other words, the Scriptures that we have, then they're not going to listen even if someone comes back from the dead with a message for them. So they have all the evidence that is necessary, but there's no evidence that we can come back from the dead to the world until the time that Jesus appears a second time. Because at that time, then the soul of Lazarus, the soul of the rich man, will return to their bodies and they will be resurrected. And then they will either be separated if they are children of God, uh, they will be united with God and separated if they're not children with go uh, of God to, uh, to eternal separation from the glory and goodness of God. Oh, okay. That question came up because I read this book called Heaven is for Real, and I just was wondering about that because I wasn't so sure about it. Yeah, and you know what's interesting about these near-death experiences, Sophia, is that if you read enough of them, they all have a different story to tell about what heaven is like. And so logically we can know that they can all be wrong, but they can't all be right. And certainly when you have heaven is for real as a book you, you, you or, or a movie you end up, or if you even listen to Colton Burpo, you end up with all these stories about knowing exactly what color God's hair is, what color his eyes are, the fact that Jesus has a pony, the fact that God the Father has wings, Jesus does not, and so forth. All of this does not comport very well with what the Scriptures teach us. So we're better to get our information from the Bible than from subjective experiences. Now, all subjective experiences are not wrong, but they should be tested in light of Scripture. The Scripture should always be our standard. Oh, uh, okay. Well, thank you so much for answering my question. You're, you're welcome. How old are you? I'm 10 years old. And, and, and Sophia, if you want to hang on, I've written um, 10 reasons why heaven is for real, but the book Heaven is for Real is not for real. And uh, mm -hmm. I can send those to you, or you can find them on the web, actually, at equip.org. Okay. Okay? Yeah, I'll definitely look, on them on, look at them on the web. Okay, cool.